We'll start with If the Cat Bits, who won a thrilling race at Aintree last time. You must have been delighted with that. Oh, absolutely. It was uh, obviously his first try at, at the trip, uh, three miles. And um, coming to the last, he looked like he was, he was going to win and he did all, all he could to throw the race away with a, with a bad mistake. And Sean Byrne did, did wonders to stay in the saddle and, and then get him up to win between two really high class mares. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a, as you said, a thrilling finish and an exciting day. And on the back of that, we're, we're going to stick to hurdles this season and hopefully campaign him in the in the top staying uh, hurdles this season, starting, albeit starting back in trip over two and a half at, at Ascot uh, in the coral hurdle that he won uh, last, last November. And what's the ambition with him ultimately? Well, hopefully the stairs hurdle, but um, obviously there's a, a pretty pretty impressive uh, champion around in, in Paisley Park and uh, he's not going to be easy to knock off his perch but uh, and we need to improve again I think nine pounds on official ratings but uh, we'll, we'll we'll certainly aim to give it a go and and that that's the plan as things stand. And does he look like he has summered well and open to improvement? Well he's, yeah he's only seven uh, it was his first try at the trip as I said so hopefully he's relatively unexposed still um, and uh, yeah, as I said, he made made plenty of uh, <laughs> did everything he could to, to throw the race away at Aintree. So um, with a slightly iron out those few issues, but uh, not their issues at all. But it was just the way that it panned out. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think we'll we'll give it a try anyway, and um, we'll see. And on to you know what I mean, Harry. Fantastic to see him winning at Punchestown at the age of eleven. Has he still got that sparkle then? Yeah, well, we went there thinking possibly that that, that could be his last run uh, because he obviously he too ran at Aintree behind if the cap fits, but uh, ran with no no enthusiasm at all that day. And, and we went to Punchestown possibly ex expecting that to be his last run if he if he ran without without that spark. And but uh, he was. Yeah, it was emphatic. Um, he bounced back to form in, in style. And OK, admittedly, the race wasn't the strongest. It wasn't ever the strongest ever running of the race. But uh, still, you've got to go and win these great ones. And he did it. And um, he's had a great summer back at Martinstown. Uh, stud, Mr. McManus is uh, in Ireland. And um, he's he's like a four-year-old. Uh, he's come back in. He's fresh and well. And um, look, as long as he's enjoying life and in being competitive, he'll, he'll keep going. And... Uh, we're looking forward to starting him at uh, Weatherby in the in the West Yorkshire Hurdle on the 2nd of November. And uh, it's not going to be easy for him at 11 turning 12 uh, this season. But uh, we'll, as I said, we'll, he's enjoying himself. He's full of enthusiasm. So we'll enjoy having him around and hopefully win, a, win another race or two. And at the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of age, King Roland, very exciting type. Oh, for sure. I mean, he couldn't have been more impressive first time out uh, in his bup at Utoxton. And again, did a lot of things wrong at, at Fossas, where he won under a penalty, um, beating a good field. Um, he was he was put away after that, and we're I mean, he's a winning English pointer pointer, and we're yeah looking forward to getting him out over hurdles this year. And uh, he'll he'll start in November on on some soft ground somewhere, probably over two miles, and and then we'll he'll dictate as and where we go. But uh, yeah, high hopes for sure. And there wasn't a temptation to go for any of the spring festivals with him last year. No, he just. That day at Fosslass, he, he he over raced a bit, and we just felt he was he was going the wrong way in bumpers, and um, obviously we didn't want to go over hurdles at the back end of last year. So we decided he's only five, he's a, he's a big frame horse, and he's strengthened well over the summer. So we we're just the owners and masters are very patient, and we decided we'd we just yeah, play the waiting game and, and look forward to getting him out this autumn over hurdles. And another exciting bumper winner, get in the queue. Yeah, lovely horse. Uh, won three bumpers. Um, obviously, famously gave Nolfelia a winning last ride and uh, at Newbury in March. And um, sadly, though, that he did pick up a small injury that day, which is going to keep him out for the second uh, until the second half of the season. But uh, he'll be a novice hurdler to look hurdler to look forward to when he when he does come back. And you mentioned Noel Feely there. You've got an unraced horse in the yard by the name of Feely. Is that name with his blessing? Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> um, well, he's sat on him a few times. So, yeah, look, he's, he's a nice horse. There's a lot of, uh, we've got some really lovely unraced four-year-olds that were in training last year and, and the ground just went against him in the spring and we've done really well over the summer. And he, he's one that uh, we're looking forward to, to starting out in a bumper in the next few weeks. I presume there'd be a bit of sort of pressure around him being quite decent if he's named Feely. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, there's probably a bit of hype around the horse before he's even set foot on the race course, just purely by his name. But um, uh, look, he's, he's a nice, he's, he 
it shows the rice signs at home. So um, we'll look forward to seeing if he can replicate it on the race course and, and go from there. A horse we know a bit more about, of course, is uh, Bags Groove. High class type. What's the plan with him? Yeah, had a really good first season over fences and um, I might actually uh, plan to start him over hurdles his first run back at, at Aintree um, uh, in November for there's a class two conditions hurdle where he doesn't have any penalties for his, his grade two successes in over fences last year and use that as a as a stepping stone with a month to the to the Peterborough. So uh, he won at Huntingdon last year, albeit over three miles. Um obviously Peterborough's two and a half, but um uh that's what we're sort of aiming for the first half of the season and hopefully he can be a, a really good second season chaser for us. And on to Hell's Kitchen? Yeah uh big fella, eighteen hands and he knows it. Um quite exuberant uh and not that all e easy to predict but uh, obviously on a on his days, he's high class, and um, uh, he, I mean, he's rated 158. But he's actually only, only ever won twice over fences, so he qualifies for a graduation chase uh, or chases. And there's a valuable one at Carlisle, uh, so the 11th of November, over two miles. So that looks an, an ideal starting point. Hopefully, uh, a nice place to kick off his campaign. And a uh, bit of a rock and a hard place. He's gonna be high in the weights and handicaps. Probably not quite up to, to, to those grey like one races, but um, uh, we'll, we'll sort of try and place in the best effect, but Carlisle looks an ideal st uh, starting point. Okay. And of those we haven't spoken about, who are you most excited about seeing out the season? Uh, I think Misty Whiskey, um, who won uh, the Mayor's EBF listed Mayor's bumper at Sandown in March, uh, is, is a really exciting recruit, uh, recruit for the novice hurling division anyway, and she's due to start out over the weekend, and um, she could uh, yeah be one to follow in Mayor's novice hurdles for sure. Harry, thank you very much. Best of luck this season. Thanks very much.